Welcome, my name is Edward Gonzalez and today we're going to be working on a tutorial that um, is going to show you how to create graphics similar to uh, something you would use in an, in an iPad iPhone application or an Android application or an iBook or a book that you can put on an Android. Um, an example would be something similar to this application that I made, it's called the life of a monarch butterfly and um, it's actually for the iPhone or the iPad. The graphics you'll be making today are going to look very similar to this one here in the middle. Uh, for this you will be needing Adobe Photoshop. Uh, let's see next. Um, throughout this I will be referring to a cheat sheet and you can find it at www.eddiesclass.com right here www.eddiesclass.com you go down here to the bottom and it will say uh, Adobe Photoshop shortcuts and screencast and you can click that and you will have those right here um, so go ahead and open your Photoshop and you should have nothing there now if you would go to my website uh, www.eddiesclass.com and from there uh, go into about and if you have your own sketches to use or an image or picture you can go ahead and use that but for my purpose today you are going to use uh, I'm going to use my picture this is a sketch I made so I'm going to go ahead and click it right click copy image again feel free to use this um, just don't go publish an app with it but you can go ahead and use it um, and next we're going to find out what the dimensions for the iPad are or uh, for an Android but I'm gonna use iPad because at some point I'm gonna put it on here and uh, right here I just looked up uh, iPad dimensions and it says right here uh, 2048 uh, by 1536 and that goes all the way across so 2048 20, 2048 by 1536 so I have my Photoshop open I'm gonna go file new and I'm gonna go uh, 1536 2048 okay and here we go next I am going to go edit and paste and the reason it pasted is because if you remember I already had copied it you can do paste in that way another way to do paste is you can do control V control V um, will paste something for you next I am going to go up here to edit and I have transform so edit transform scale and I can make my picture larger or smaller you see how the proportion changes maybe I don't want the proportion to change if I hold shift while I drag it it will keep the same proportion now to get into the, and then at the end you press enter enter and there it is now to actually get into some of the shortcuts shortcut if you press control and T whatever whatever layer you are on it will resize what is there you press escape and you can get out of it so control T escape gets you out again I press control T and I can make it the size I want when I have it the size that I want I press enter and voila. I'm going to go ahead and rename this as sketch okay so next we are going to use what is called the pen tool this is the pen tool here if you hold it it'll give you variations of the pen tool you want it to be the top one pen tool Another way you can get the pen tool is simply by pressing P, the letter P, on your keyboard. So you press the letter P on your keyboard and it turns into your pen tool. 
And here's is another shortcut for you. I am going to press F. If you press F, it makes it it makes the screen or the canvas go full screen. From there, I can press Z and it'll let me zoom in and zoom out. So F goes full screen, Z zoom in, zoom out. And another tool here is H. With uh, H, you get the hand tool and you can move it around. F takes it as full screen, out of full screen. And again, I will show you the, the shortcuts. Remember where I showed you? Here are my shortcuts. And right there on the blog. So again, if you forgot that, you are in www.eddiesclass.com. Go to the bottom here. Adobe Photoshop shortcuts and screencast. And here you go. Um, let's see. I also put the file underneath uh, the video so that you could get the file link directly there too. So now I'm here, uh, back into Photoshop. Right now I have the hand tool. I'm selected on my sketch. I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to click, double click the letters here. Double clicking the letters will make it be the, um, uh, will make me change the name. I'm going to change the name to outline. Actually, I'm going to change it to uh, spawn outline. Spawn is going to be this part of the egg here, so this is what we're going to work on. Next, I am going to push uh, P. This is my pen tool. I'm going to click once, click again and hold it, let it go, click again, hold it, let it go. When you hold it, what it does is it preserves your ability to be able to manipulate um, the shape of that line. If you press control, you can actually go back and change something else in the back that you've already done or something you've already completed. Let control go and you can go back into uh, making your outline. So control, hold. You always want to, you don't want to pick your pen up too soon. Just hold it, reposition yourself to where you need to use the tools and then close it. Now, now that it's cold, closed, I'm going to press B so that I can see how big my brush is. Um, I want my brush at 8. That's the size we're using today. You're going to use your own size whenever you're making your projects, but I'm going to use 8. You can resize your brush. Again, I'm on that brush because I pressed B. You can resize it here. See how big it is now? Make it smaller. You can type in your size here. You see how big it is. There's also these little brackets next to the uh, enter button. And um, the brackets look like these right here. There's these little brackets. You can click on those and it will make it make your uh, brush smaller or larger. The right one goes larger, the one on the left goes smaller. I'm gonna make sure it's at eight. You know it's at eight because it says eight right here. So my brush is at eight and now I'm gonna press P again and I'm gonna right click. And I'll put stroke path, brush, and voila. Now I have my first outline. Next, I'm gonna press control. So hold control, you gotta hold on to it. It makes that little arrow, or it makes that white arrow. Click it, and then get rid of that, delete. I don't like that there, it makes, it, it makes life a little bit more difficult for me, so I delete that. Now I'm back at P. I'm gonna want this outline to be a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna press B, drag it down to, we'll say five, go back into P. And I'm going to start right here. And click and drag and hold. And click and drag and hold. And click and drag and hold. 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 Click 
take it, drag it, hold it. It doesn't go as wide as I want it to, so I could press the control button and come back and fix that. You see that weird little thing that it's doing there? You could fix it or not fix it, but you see it doesn't quite work, so I could hold the control button, get that white arrow, and then I could come back and um, keep trying to fix it. So there you go. I have it all set. Say I wanted to move a point afterwards, I could go back and move it by holding control. So it's all set up. I'm gonna right click, stroke path. You might be, it might have been a pencil, make sure you have brush, okay. And that's that. Press control, make sure I select it. Backspace or delete, delete, and those are gone. And so far what we have here is we have our spawn outline. Um, now, a couple things for you that if, you're, if you've already been drawing a lot, maybe you know, maybe you don't. But you notice that it looks kind of flat right here in this area. The reason it's kind of flat is because I didn't incorporate these little overlapping lines. And those are pretty important just to add depth. So I'm gonna make sure that I come back and I make those lines fit there just because it's gonna give it that more realistic curve. Again, right click, stroke path, okay, and then delete and delete. So now when I look back at it this time, it actually, you could see it, it, uh, it looks right. Uh, to make sure, here's something for you that you, uh, if you're new, you don't know it, but um, you can uh, click this right here, this key, or this uh, uh, lock, and make sure that uh, you don't touch this layer by pressing the lock. So just a little bit of advice there so you don't go around messing it up your project. Um, go back and press B again. And you're gonna start making these little speckles here that are like particles. You can make them different sizes by using the, the little brackets to make them different sizes. Making them different sizes gives it uh, different perceptions of depth, um, just a little effects, little bits of, I guess, noise or whatever goes in there. And we'll look again. And so there's our egg. Now I'm gonna zoom in and we're gonna color it. We are going to color it on a different layer. This over here is my layers. And so I have my spawn outline, my sketch. And then right here um, is my layer. You can move your layers to different sides. Double click the words and I am going to rename it spawn color. This little book that we're making here is actually gonna go with a bunch of activities that a, that a first and third grader will be able to do. So it's important to put the colors, at least for me, it's important to put the colors on a different layer so that um, I could use this as a little coloring book afterwards. I'm gonna press F to make it go full screen again. Uh, Z to zoom in a little bit more. And I'm gonna pick my color. You can use, so here's, so here's a little problem that we just kind of came into, but not uh, something you could fix easily. And this is something that you're gonna come across a lot if you made your own sketches. So notice how I'm picking different colors here. And um, none of the colors are coming out. They're all coming out in gray. The reason is because the sketch preserved it in black and white. So I can go up here to image. I can go to image, to mode. You're gonna see that I have grayscale. Grayscale is checked, so that means grayscale is working. I actually want it to be RGB. I'm gonna click RGB. Flatten means it's gonna take away all my layers. I don't want that, so I'm gonna put don't flatten. And now I can choose my color. Um, you can click up here and you get to choose from the different types. Uh, we're gonna pick this kind of pastel-y green. I'm gonna press B. I can make my brush larger with the little brackets again. Over there next to enter. Again, if you don't remember what those look like, you can print this out on my site. It's also gonna be in the video link. And 
these are the brackets smaller larger smaller larger and it's over on the right hand side next to the enter key and now I'm going to start painting make sure you paint where it says font color if you're painting on the outline you're going to mess up and you have to go back and fix that uh, let's see so I got this say I mess up something like say I accidentally colored on the spawn outline whoops I messed up uh, I can go back here on my history and go back to the previous steps and it'll it'll take me back to where I was if your history is not here you can pick window and then make sure it's checked right there and then you'll see it there and if history is checked then it's gonna be somewhere up here or on the top or on the bottom it's right here for now so I'm going to make sure I'm on spawn color, start coloring it in. I'm kind of going over a little bit just so that I can come back and use the eraser tool and show you about that. Uh, next is the eraser tool. So you see I bled over the edge, I didn't want that. The eraser tool is right here. You can hold it and you'll see different variations, but you want the top one. Or you can press E and the eraser is there for you. You can make it smaller or larger using the same uh, little brackets next to the enter button. And so here is my egg. to my brush which is B. Alright now I am going to make my tadpole. I'm picking H the hand tool. Or I mean sorry the space bar which is a space bar or I could push H and it gives me the hand. Uh, Z to zoom in. H the hand. So I pressed P again. P is my pen tool. Click, click, hold, drag, click, hold, drag, click, hold, drag, click, hold, drag, right click, stroke path, brush. And that is not what I expected. So remember, I can press either Control Z or I can go over here click this one. Now the reason it didn't work out is because my brush is not set to where it was before. If you look up here it's at 35 and the color is green. If you remember what we're using is 8. So I press the uh, that little bracket key next to enter, bring it down to 8. And then over here in the colors I can pick it swatches, get to the black. And now when I go back into the pen tool, press P, right click stroke path make sure the tool selected is brush okay excellent make sure this is selected delete those outlines backspace backspace or delete delete click hold drag click hold drag click hold drag right click stroke path brush and since my little outlines are there delete delete right click stroke path delete delete right click or not right click sorry click drag, click and drag, click and drag, stroke path, delete, delete, click, drag, click, drag, click, drag, click and 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 Okay, delete, delete. 
right click, scroll path, okay, delete, delete. I want those eyes, so I press B to be a little bit smaller. I'll make it go down to uh, 5. Go back to my pen tool. Drag the sizes. Right click, stroke path. Delete. Brush B. And then go in here and brush. There you go. Pressing in the space bar so it gives me my hand tool. Now, here I made my first little mistake. Maybe you've noticed spawn color. Look at that, my outline for the tadpole is on the spawn color. So, what you can do is you can go over here to the lasso, as lasso tool, polygonal lasso tool, different ones. We're just going to use this one, it's called polygonal lasso tool, tool right there. You can click and then you kind of just draw your selection around it. Pretty cool. And then when you pick it up, you have it selected. So we could go edit, cut, edit, paste. And then to actually move it around, you click this right here, your pointer tool. use your arrow keys to line it up to where you want it. Well, I'm fine right there. So I'm going to move this up, rename them, click on the letters, double click, tadpole, outline. That means I'm going to need a new one that is tadpole color. If you press I, that is also this over here, which is your eye drop. So I'm going to press I, and when you click the eyedropper, what it does is it selects whatever color you are using. So if you look down here, I just collect, I'm clicking black, so black comes out, white, white comes out. And there is the green color that we've been using. I'm going to use that same green color for the tadpole, so I press B, go into the brush, make it larger. Go ahead and start coloring that. If you want me to try and do a screen, or if you want me to do a screencast for you on how to make things look photorealistic, how to actually paint, um, you can email me and I'll do that. I don't know if anybody's interested in that. I have uh, paintings on um, my on my site. You can go to www.eddiesclass.com and you'll see some of my paintings right there if you want to learn to paint like that um, that's pretty cool that's really fun actually I really like that um, those are those are it's like one of my favorite ways to pass the time now you see over here I bled over a little bit so I press E that's my eraser go ahead and erase that I should rename this as uh, Tad full color. Now I am going to click here because I want to actually make a different color here. We'll stick with that blue there. And this little um, kind of try and give it like the effect like it's translucent. When you make the graphics, it's always best to make them larger and then shrink them down smaller. So say um, I was going to want to make a poster for this, I'm going to probably have wanted to make the graphics larger so that it comes out clearer in the poster. It's always easier to go from, uh, from larger to smaller than from, uh, from, 
from smaller to larger because if you go smaller to larger it comes out pixelated and the resolution is really bad and then you find yourself having to redraw it and that's not fun so it's better to uh, go big or go home actually you will go big and then you'll go home if you don't go big you are going to go home and redo it so go big so you don't go home Control Z will always undo the last action. That's like the quickest shortcut for you. Now, um, down here, you see I have blue is my foreground, white is my background. If I press this, they just swap over. I could also press X, the letter X on the keyboard, and then it changes it so that I can use that one. Very nice little trick I like. Whoops. That wasn't it, so I should put D, there you go. And so now I have my tadpole, I have my um, my spawn, and my graphics are almost ready to create the little book. You can go in and you can clean up these little details and make, them look, make it look better. Um, I guess I'll do that now. So I'll press B, whoops, brush. Notice how I don't have the right color again. So I can press I, my eyedropper. Now I have the right color. Press B. Clean all this mess up. over here to the sketch uh, let's see. That. Let's over here and we're gonna make the frog the frog is gonna be different we're gonna use a couple of layers the reason we're gonna do that is because we're actually gonna do something uh, so that we can animate him swimming that's gonna be easier it's gonna be called our puppet tool and that's gonna be an after effects that's gonna be in another video so um, uh, let's see I'm gonna do the frog real fast you can take your time um, but just remember this right now I want you to go ahead and make a new layer it's gonna be your frog outline and um, we're gonna do a different one for frog back leg and then frog front leg so we're gonna start with the frog outline first click drag click and 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 drag it's kind of the same process clicking and dragging just slight little drags it doesn't have to be perfect skin's bumpy and it doesn't really matter kind of was making me think of a uh, crocodile click and drag 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 right click stroke path brush Boom, we made the same mistake as last time. That means control Z or go over here on the side. Press B for your brush. Look how big my brush is, it's at 15. I want it to be at eight. So uh, I remember I, uh, you can go from right here, make it smaller from here, or you can press uh, those little brackets. Again, if you forgot what those look like, these right here, smaller brush, larger brush. I'm gonna go back. And I also want it to be black. So after I have my brush selected to where I want them, press P, right click, uh, stroke path, brush, and there we go. So we have that part set up. Um, 
So now I'm back in my pen tool. P. to fix that there. Don't want that mask. Right click, stroke path, brush, delete, delete, get rid of that outline. And remember I'm doing two I'm doing different something different for the legs and for the uh, for the body stroke path. And the reason it's gonna be because we're gonna animate it. So in order to give them the swimming effect uh, we're gonna have to do that. Make his eyeballs. Stroke path. Okay. Delete. Now, uh, I'm just gonna freestyle this last little part, meaning that I'm not gonna use any uh, the pen tool. I'm just gonna kind of trace it here with the brush tool. It's going to look a little bit uglier, but it doesn't really matter because these are all rough sides of the frog anyways. Just try not to touch it. You might get a wart. Ugh. I don't know if that's still, if people still say that, but when I was a little kid, everyone would say, if you touch the frog, you get a wart. Um, and then frogs have this little thing back here. That's their ear. Um, I'm not going to keep it, I'm going to get rid of it. You can change the color later if you want to. Uh, we'll make the eye, leave that little highlight in there. Um, let's see. So now we're going to make the frog outline. Do you remember how to get the color? You can press I. If you press I, it gives you the eyedropper. You click it, go back, press B. But remember, do not color it yet. We need this here. Uh, we're gonna make our uh, double click it. So we made a new layer, double click it, frog color. Uh, this is a good time to exercise something that's uh, kind of underrated, which is save. <laughs> you mess up plenty of times. So press save as. I'm gonna call this um, frog. Life cycle tutorial. I'm gonna save it. And so I'm gonna color it now. I'll press B, make my brush bigger with a little bracket. If you remember how to do that. If not, look at that cheat sheet on the blog. One of the cool things is um, if you do your artwork the way that I'm showing you right now, when you put it into After Effects, you can come back and actually edit your artwork and then it updates it. So this is really, really great. This is a really forgiving program in that you can go and change things and then it keeps changing it for you uh, back and forth. And it's kind of like a time saver. Um, it's just really smooth. and. Um, you guys are really lucky that you got this software package from the district. It's actually really expensive. Uh, so it's like as if uh, you have uh, little Ferraris there in your laptops and you guys don't know exactly how to drive them there. So you start using them in no time you'll be doing better things than I'm doing here. And then uh, you come and show me a couple things because that's how this works. You know, you learn something new, you share it, other people learn it, other people share it. Alright, um, so now I'm going to do the legs. So here's the front leg frog. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, click, 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 click. It's kind of hard to see, so you need to zoom in. again. If you didn't remember how to zoom in, that's the Z button. There's a bunch of different ways to do everything on here. And once you get used to whatever it is your way of doing it, you know, stick to it. 
Don't be afraid to try new things though. But there isn't really one right way to do it. You know, the ultimate what what matters is what your end product look what your end product looks like. And if your end product is just stellar, well then you did it the right way. But everybody else doesn't have to do it the same way. Um, so remember, I need to change this to uh, black. So I'm gonna press B. Uh, I'm gonna click this here. It's kind of a shortcut. It makes it black. I could change my size right there. I could use the little brackets. Get it down to eight. Go back to P here. Stroke path. And there you go. Delete, delete. Now you notice it's kind of behind it. I want it in front of it, so I'm gonna drag the leg up right there. Also look at this back here, delete, erase that, so press E and erase that. Back up to the frog leg. I'm gonna make a new layer over here. This down here is your new layer, new layer. Click it, this is gonna be frog. Front leg color. And you can go ahead and start coloring it. You get the color by pressing I, click it back and press B again, make your brush the right size. Now you're going to notice that I'm kind of in front of it. I don't want to be in front of the outline, I want to be behind the outline. You see frog front leg is on top, You want it, or frog front leg color is on top, you want it to be on the bottom. So that means that the outline comes out on top of it and it makes it look crisp, clean. You can zoom in and fix it up, make sure everything kind of looks good, people care about appearance, people care about, you know, are you staying, are you doing it, uh, does it look clean, does it look right, you know, you can make it look sloppy, if sloppy is the style, and people will look at it and say, wow, that's amazing, it's, you know, I like that sloppy style, but if it's not meant to be sloppy, well, then it's not amazing, so just be careful, just be aware of what it is you're trying to achieve. Uh, let's see, frog front leg, frog front leg. So I got frog back leg. I'm gonna move frog back leg all the way up because I want that one up here too. And press P, go back, make my new outline. Click, click, hold, drag, click, click, hold, drag, control, and go back in. So I'm kind of making sure I have all the details just so you understand what's happening. These drawings, uh, for the most part, are going to be really little if they're animated. They're not really little, but they're going to go really fast if they're animated. So it might not matter so much, depending on what you're making. Remember, again, uh, you want this to be the right color, black, the right size, and to be 8, P, go back into your pen tool, stroke path, brush. And then delete, delete to get rid of that. We need the color. Let's make a new color. Change the name. Frog. Back. Leg. Color. Eye for your eyedropper. Select it. B. Go ahead and start coloring it. Space bar to move it around with the hand tool. Hold the space bar to move it around again with the hand tool. work everything is
his name good. Yep, 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 yep. Next, we're going to be taking this into a program called Illustrator, or I mean uh, After Effects. And we are going to be working some magic there. So make sure you save it, file, save. And again, thank you. You can find uh, this tutorial and other tutorials www.eddiesclass.com. All right.